It's the Staley Bridge Celtic Lockdown Podcast, sponsored by Olds Beer and More and the Celtic Beer Hut. Aha! Stay tuned for more. So we're here on the episode six of the Staley Bridge Celtic Lockdown Podcast, and we're here with uh, John Reed. So I'd just like to welcome Reedy onto the podcast. Um, I'm sure we've got lots to talk about. Uh, the episode is sponsored by Olds Beer and More and the Celtic Beer Hut. Their socials will be in the description and on the video. Um, just go and give them a follow on their socials. The Olds Beer and More is a new bottle shop that's going to be open up in Market Street in Staley Bridge. So make sure you pay a visit when it's open. The Celtic Beer Hut hopefully reopens when uh, we're back playing. Before we start with your managerial career, just tell us a bit about your playing background. Yeah, yeah. Um, started very young, like I did with my managerial career. <laughs> I uh, I made my debut with the Thorn Collar in the old Yorkshire League when I was 17. Um, and then obviously I, I got picked up by York City. I think I made something like 40 odd games with them. Um, and then to be honest with you, I got, I got re, um, but I got, believe it or not, I'd got a chance to go and work for the gas board uh, and Frickley offered me an incredible contract. So I, I went back playing part-time football and uh, I, I'm working full-time for Gasboard. And as daft as it sounds, Andrew, probably doubled my money. Right. Because it, I mean, I mean, we're going back, well, what, I was 18, so 51, 69, that'd be uh, 25 quid a week, my wages. Right. Are then I went to Frickley uh, and we finished second in the mid- the old Midland League, which would be probably what the conference premier is now, actually. Right. It were a fantastic league. Uh, and, then, and then I went to play for Worksop. Um, and then uh, I went to join Mick Hughes at Denneby at, when I was 26 to our player coach. I, I, I took my prelim badges very early with the... Uh, a legend, as I call him, Mick Hennigan. I don't know if you remember Mick Hennigan, Leeds United. And um, after 12 games, the sack, the manager asked me to go into temporary charge. And, and now at 69, I've never come away from it. So it's been, <laughs> a, it's been an incredible journey, really. Yeah. Um, we just had a little bit of a chat then about your playing career. Um you you fell into your manager managerial career after just doing your badges and uh, after being asked to take temporary charge of a club. Uh, what has it been like? What was it like that taking temporary charge of a club early on in your career? Um, well, it was made a lot easier because I had a, a tremendous assistant manager, a, a lad called John Kirk, who he he went to Wembley with me with Bridlington, so. John was just fantastic. And I've got to tell you this funny story because we took over and um, the first week, I mean, I was playing obviously regular. I mean, not without being silly, I was banging goals in and like that. You, you'd look at cheat and you'd go, well, them three, they'll be on every week. Anyway, I didn't feel well that week. And on the Tuesday and Thursday, I didn't train. Uh, but after, on the Friday, I felt really well and me and John obviously were talking and saying about the team for tomorrow which were against my old team. My first ever semi-pro team were Thorn Colliery. Uh, so as you can appreciate, Andrew, I was desperate to play. Yeah. So anyway, we get to the ground and I said, well, this is how we want to do it, John. Every game we come, we'll come an hour before the players. Me and you can uh, go into manager's office and we'll discuss what we think of the team. So... So when you, you arrive, I want you to have your team on paper and I'll have mine on paper. So that's what we did. Anyway, I said, go on then, John. Seeing as it's first time together and our first match, you tell me what your team is. He says, no, you tell me what yours is. So I told him my team and said, right, well, I've got nine, I've got 10 players exactly the same as you. I've got one, unfortunately, who I haven't put on the team. And I said, all right, go on then, tell me, thinking any anybody else other than me. And he went, it's, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's fair that, that you're playing. And I said, 
what do you mean? He said, well, let me put it another way for you. He said, if any other player had a not trained Tuesday, Thursday and turned up on Saturday, would you play him? And I went, no. Mm. That were it. So we both had a laugh and he put me on sour on bench, fortunately. Somebody got injured in the first half and I went on and we won 3 1. So <laughs> I think that was the start of it for me. And, and I always say John Kirk takes a lot of credit of, of what he did with me because, as I say, um, it, it were new to me. I think, I think it was one of the, I don't know if it's the most even now, but in them days, I'm sure it was the youngest ever manager at that level. Wow. And uh, we, we had a fantastic first season. Like I say, when we took over, we played seven, lost six, drawn one. And we missed promotion by one point. So, um, you know, it, were, it, were, it were great. And we had two or three more seasons. And then, like I say, other opportunities came along and we, we obviously went elsewhere. Where did you move on after there? I knew you'd ask me that. <laughs> now then. Got to get this right. That, that's the trouble with me with my flipping memory. So obviously, that would be at, at um, 26. <clears throat> it must have been. It must have been rather Retford, which again, again, I only were there a season. We won the league. Do you know what? I'd have to. Ch- I'd have to really check that. Okay. Out. Yeah, I should have done a bit more homework for you. That's okay. Um, we'll we'll move on a bit a bit further. Then you you mentioned that you you, you won the league at, at at that club. Then one of your highlights of your career must be when you got to the final of the FA Vars with Bridlington. I think you just mentioned it. Then what was that like? Well, it was incredible. You know, it it, done, it nothing can prepare you for it because. We had a lovely chairman who everybody knows. I mean, it's no hidden fact. Um, you know, we had really massive money. There were no two ways about it. And uh, Ken Richardson was a very, very wealthy man back in 1990 worth £24 million. Um, oh. So, to be fair to him, he, he, you know, I mean, if anything, he used to say to me, John, you won't come, you won't come to me for anybody. I said... I don't need anybody. We top at league. We're in four cup finals. I said, you know, we're going to Wembley. What do I need to change? Yeah, but sometimes it's good to freshen it up. I says, no, I'm an old school manager. Uh, if your team's doing well and your players are doing well, I never used to change things, Andrew, as you probably realise that. But he took us down to um, a, a, a beautiful hotel. This is how good it was. Staying there because they were playing uh, Crystal Palace on the Saturday with Manchester City. And uh, I'm not kidding, it was just incredible. We stayed there Thursday and Friday. And then Friday, you were allowed, one team were allowed to go around Wembley and soak it all up all in the morning. And one went in the afternoon. And uh, I enjoyed that as much as I did the match. It was were, it were just incredible, honestly, mate, you know. I had to laugh because John Kirk, he were a right, he were a right funny lad and he, he had every trick going. And this big, massive plaque all round the ground on the Friday saying, please do not take a ball on the pitch. What does John Kirk have up his backside or, or back of his shirt? He's got a smallish ball and he just shouted to all the lads, now then he yeah, are, lads, just to make sure Kirk, he gets the first goal at Wembley. And he hit this <laughs> plastic ball at back at neck. Well, I'm not kidding. They were like, Three groundsmen got round him in about the space of about a minute. Then they said, "Wow!" And he just said, oh, "I'm sorry, I missed him." And they said, "No, you you didn't miss him." But but yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it was just an incredible journey. I mean, that journey coming out after you'd done your team talk and at ten to three, walking up them this the, you know this the, the the tunnel onto the pitch. You don't realise how steep that is as well. Or, well, it's not there now. They all went live up. And then just to, even though there are only 13,000 there, it would just, I don't control myself. I just cried and cried and cried. Their manager loved it. It was laughing and but everybody's emotions are different, aren't they, Andrew? Yeah. Um, Sorry, go on. You, you mentioned uh, about uh, being an old school manager. How would you describe yourself to people that may not know you? 
uh, as you sort of uh, your style and stuff like that. And also, one mentioned to me that you hated losing, and you'd become you and you and Atco were coming very angry if you'd lost a game and be kicking and shouting and stuff like that. Oh yeah, we are. I know. If you can find anybody who who reacts different, any any nicer or any worse, sorry than me, you know, I, I'm like the non-league Neil Warnock. There's no two ways about that. Uh, crazy, absolute. I remember once. I'll tell you this and. And I had to apologise to the lad a bit, a bit, a bit. And we were, this was when I were at manager of, of Ghoul Town, and uh, we played away at um, somewhere in the central Midland. I blew my memory anyway. We played this League Cup game and we lost three two, and uh, we didn't play particularly well either. But we lost three two, and um, when we were in the dressing rooms, one of the sub. Bless him, he'd gone and got all everybody a cup of tea. We're in winter, we're freezing, and he was just about to start passing them. And, and, and because we'd lost, that's all it was. He, he, he was near enough, just a yard away where I, I could get to him. And I said, What the heck? I, I've got to say, heck, for I was no yeah. I said, What the heck are you doing here? I'm getting lads a cup of tea. And I said, What we've lost tea too, and you get him a cup of tea. And I hit this tray of drinks. And it sprayed all over, hot tea for uh, over about five or six players, and uh, and and then the chairman came in and said, "Oh, Johnny, it's wages. So you can take them. They're not having any wages for today. We've got beat, Mike. They're not having any wages. Take it away. I'll I'll talk to you before Thursday training, and we'll come up with some plan about the money. But if they're not getting it tonight, I can assure you now, I'm not filling their pockets with money. And then uh, just to it finished that story. Is that what we did then? Is I said to Mike on the Thursday, um, we've got we had a real top of league um, game uh, on the Saturday, and I said if they win Saturday, you can give them double money, and that's what they did. And I can't remember which, we beat somebody something like four or five nil, and they got double money. But yeah, horrible is the word. I can only say that to you. Somebody once um, fought, filmed me doing a team call for Harrogate Town in the old Unibon Division 1. And it were a West Riding Cup game. It didn't have anything. The thing was, we won 1-0 against a, a team about three leagues below. But we played horrendous. And I have no kidding. It were embarrassing having, having somebody watch, film me, then showing you what you did after game. Honestly, embarrassing. No other word for it. But no. Awful, awful, and man, and to be honest with you, Andrew, not that much better now. <laughs> <laughs> when you were, when you mentioned about, um, it's it's quite interesting when you mentioned about saying that when the players got the wages and you'd say like, oh, they're not allowed them. How can you sort of describe football now? Be still being involved compared to to back then because. I don't think you'll find a lot of teams these days that would go, you're not allowed your wages on and stuff. I've heard plenty of stories in the past of people not giving wages out for stuff like that. But it's changed a lot now, football, especially in non-league. I, I totally and utterly agree with we, you, we, 100%. Um, no, players' players' attitude have changed dri- dif- differently. Players, in my opinion now, in a lot of, not only non-league, even football league, players have a lot more power than they ever had did when I had my first few years in management. And um, no, I, I would say I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to get away with that. Because first thing they'll do, they could say, well, we'll go to PFA or we'll go to Players Union. They won't think, they won't think twice, Andrew. Yeah. But after that tells you that back in them days. It, to be honest, their attitudes were, were fantastic. It, it, there's no other word for it compared to today. Because it's really a yeah. true Andrew. People used to sign for me in, in for many, many years just to play with my teams. Now they only come for one thing and that's the pay packet. Yeah. It is. Money, money talks now, mate. Yeah, it does. Um, before we move on to Staley Bridge... Um... We'll, we'll go to Harrogate Town, which is another club you mentioned. Uh, you had a, a few good seasons there. One of them, you won the league in 2001, I think it was. Um, 2001, 2002, yeah. 
Yeah, how 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 was it managing Harrogate Town? Because they're a good, I mean, they're a good team now. But they're a good team then as well. Magnificent club run by, and I went to his funeral last year. Bless him. Uh, it's some, I always say he's the best chairman that ever I've ever worked with. People don't know what he was like behind the scenes. People always used to say, "Oh, he's a big head from me when he was at Leeds United." Blah blah blah. But Bill Fotherby were the most sweetest lovable man I've ever come across in football. You know, he had the, all the right skills. He didn't need to talk to me when we're winning games and drawing games, but it were the ones when you lost and he could see that I were down and he used to drag me into his office and he, he used to just say, look, you know, it's part of football, blah, blah, blah. And, and I always remember one particular season, I think it was my third season in, we had a, a terrible, a, a terrible run. And as you know now, Andrew, you lose six games on trot nowadays, you get sacked, don't you? Yeah. 99%. And I always remember we were playing um, Prescott Cables at home. And um, I was walking past this. He, he had these, he had a fantastic uh, sponsorship uh, lounge, which he called it, that was his office. As I got halfway past it, we'd lost five on bounce. And I thought, lose today, definitely, I'll be, I'll be gone. And it, all of a sudden, I had this rattle on the window, and it was Mr. Fotherby. And I never, ever called him anything other than Mr. Fotherby or Mr. Chairman. Um, he, he gave me a curly finger, and I, I just turned around to, um, to, <laughs> to Mark Atkins, and I said, I think that's me done now, mate. Anyway, I went in. And he said, come in, sit down. He says, here, have a nice whiskey. And I said, well, I don't, shouldn't be having whiskey before again. He says, well, you do, because you need to settle your nerves, because you've walked past my uh, my office, he says, and it looks like you're going to chambers to be home. <laughs> he says, listen, he said, look, I can tell you now, if I'm here another 10 years, you'll be with me. I can tell you now, because there's no board of directors. I own the club. I love you. We get going fantastic, he said. We'll sort it out. Get that team talk done now, like you've always done for me. And we won, I think we won 3 0. And I always remember him for that. I did. In fact, I was talking to his family at his funeral and I was telling them the story, and they were all crying. All yeah. of them. And Incredible so, yes, story. It, it was a brilliant thing. And to win it, league, I mean, it, it, it's lovely for me now because even now, we, me and Mr. Fotherby, we're the only two people who've taken a title for Harrogate down in the 100-year history. Nobody's ever won a league, even now after us. And uh, and also, it, after I think it, it was 16 years since they'd won the West Riding Cup. And uh, the, the following season, we won. We won in fact, we won a two-year on trot. So, uh, marvellous times. And... You can see now when I went when I came to join Staley Bridge and Fortune, Bill fell out with me, and uh, we didn't talk for about eight months until we played Harrogate at Staley Bridge, and he was coming down the tunnel, and he was going to ignore me, and I thought, no, I'm not having that because for six years he was a wonderful person to me, and uh, I just stopped him and held him, held his shoulders, and said, "Come on, Mister, we've got to put this behind us. You know, look at all them fantastic times we had, and you know." Please let's, let's get back talking and be friends. And the day he died, we I used to go and see him every month without fail. I used to drive to Harrogate from Doncaster. We'd, we'd have an afternoon, and all you can imagine, all we talked about was football. Yeah, he loved it. He loved it. He'd say, "Oh, I look forward to that." When you ring and say, "I'm coming to see you," says I always used to say to 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 me one of his daughters, Lynn, make sure you get. Everything ready for John, blah, blah, blah. And then we always used to finish off with a, a malt whiskey before I drove home. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible story. Um, when Before we move on to your joining Stale Bridge, I think one of the, I mean, you, I think you beat us twice in that season uh, before you joined. Um, yeah. But there was a game where you played us in the trophy, I believe, where you were 2 0 up. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. Yeah, and you come back and beat us and I think it was something like tenth minute of injury time. You you got a winner. Unbelievable. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we move on to, to joining Stalebridge and it's no secret that it was put on record that Stalebridge put on an incredible offering for you to yes. come and join because it was quite a shock when you was flying at Harrogate to come and join a team that looked stricken for relegation. Um, what what was that like and, and, and sort of take us through the great escape as they call it? Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't realise, but obviously people behind the scenes like Rob Gorski and certainly Peter Denley, they were tremendous. They they they, had, they, they played their part because obviously, you know, you can imagine when, when we came, you look at that table and I don't, well, Pete Denley said, we've brought you in to um, get us back up next year. And I went, 17 matches to go. He went, yeah. I know there is, but look at that league table. I said, well, do you know what? I'll be able to get three or four absolute quality players in within within weeks if you can obviously give me the, the support financially. And then he obviously, obviously always has to talk to Rob and uh, they did that. They, they, went, they bent over backwards for the people I brought in. And I knew I knew what we'd do. And I looked at all, all what we've got left. I, looked, I went from top to bottom and you can't always do it like that, but there weren't many I got wrong. And I thought, well, we can get a point there, we can get three, three there, blah, blah, blah. But we might not get nothing there. And I said to Pete, and he'll tell you, it, it, Pete, but I said, uh, I ain't seen him for ages. He's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And um, and I said to him, we'll have a right chance. And, and I remember Mark Hacking, when I was going home, he said, you're absolutely crackers, really. He can't do that. Can't, we can't keep these up. And I said, we can. We definitely can. And I think it was, I'm 99% certain, the first game, we, we trained on the Thursday. And I remember going home with Mark, he kind of said, really, these are rubbish, mate. They're rubbish. And we lost 2-0 at home on the Saturday to Hinkley. And I, I'd managed to then to get about four in for the Monday night away at Bradford Park Avenue. Yeah. And we won 1-0. Scott Bonsall, I think, scored goal. And uh, and then it, 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 you could feel it. Because what I did, I just got fighters. I didn't get skillful players because we just played a straight straight 4-4-2 system. And, uh, you know, we used to put it into them channels. And, uh, and all my career, I, I'll tell you now, if people haven't got de- determination, desire, work rate, they're not good for me. And that's what I brought in. I think the best signing I ever thing, and, and I, I'm actually his assistant manager now at Belper, was Grant Black. You know, he played for me at Harrogate and then he, after Staley Bridge, he came with me to Buxton. He, he was just fantastic, brilliant signing. And even Paul Sykes, people like that, you know, became a legend at Staley Bridge. Yeah. And uh, it was just an incredible four months, whatever it was, January, February, March, April, yeah. Four months. It was amazing. And when, we got, when we got on that run, oh, it was, it was. There was no, and I keep saying this to many, many people, it was just like being in, involved in a league title. Just to get out of the bottom three, for us to finish fourth, we, we, won the, we won the league, in my opinion, by all means. And that that night against Hucknall, when we won 2 uh, it that were as special to me as, as like I say, um, walking out at Wembley. And that, that's a massive statement, really, isn't it? Yeah. For, non, for a non-league person. But it, it were amazing. And, and oh, I mean, I, I, I made myself look an absolute idiot because I, I threw my shirt at fans. And there I am, we were flipping 40-odd-year-old belly on me. So... <laughs> But, you know, the fans, they, they, they were a nice hardcore of fans and they used to come away with us and they used to get behind the lads. And uh, it was fabulous. It, it really was. And uh, it made that decision to move from Arrogate to Staley Bridge, you know, it, 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 when people say any regrets, and, and I, I haven't got any regrets. I haven't. You know, it, people say you probably would have won the league with Arrogate if you'd have stayed, but... Like I said to him, well, I wouldn't be with Staley Bridge, keeping them, getting them out of them, that bottom three when it looked incredibly impossible. So, no, fabulous. Absolute three years of pure pleasure. 
That's good to hear. I mean, I've got a couple of uh, things that people have to sort of, sort of remind you of at Scarborough away when Matty Barlow scored. 94th minute. What a goal. Yeah. What a goal that was. Amazing. I can, I can remember I, I were nearly in on centre circle when, but while they were celebrating our lads. It was <laughs> incredible. Fantastic. But do, do you realise though, Andrew, or does people not realise, well, that, that was actually the game that actually relegated Scarborough. Yeah. And the funny part about this, what not many people know was when at Scarborough, sorry, at Staley Bridge, when they, after the, thank you for the third season, when they said they weren't renewing my contract, Scarborough uh, chairman rang me and said, the job's yours, John. And then two weeks later, it were on calendar, they closed all doors and they went out of business. So I didn't get yeah. the chance to manage them because I, I, I did say to him, oh, I'd definitely come here. But yeah. He, he couldn't do so. But yeah, uh, marvellous that goal. I remember it as if it were yesterday. He must have been 20, 22 yards out and he just rifled it top corner. Um, and another one is uh, the scenes when you won at Bradford. Do you, do you remember them? You thought we won't World Cup. Like you said, um, not only for, for the players as well, because all the Staley Bridge fans were behind dugout where we were. And um, as soon as that whistle went, like I say, you'd have thought we'd won the title. And it were great. We were all, everybody were hoping. I didn't know anybody then. I'd only been there a few days. And uh, yeah, and you, you just got that feeling to say, there's going to be something special here. And, and it, yeah. it, it were a fact. And like I say, I'll say it again. Them fans, they played a massive part in it. The, when I mean, you mentioned the fans, I was going to talk to you about, about that. Um, I, when a lot of the fans talk about Stade of the Bridge, they talk about John Reed and and how he how they connected with him. Just describe how how it was to be on that sort of level with him. I, I mean, I, I hear all sorts of stories about you going on the coaches to, and giving them beer money and stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That I did actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, have, you have so many fond memories of you. Yeah, I mean, I used to really love to mingle with them afterwards in bar, and you know, there were some real characters, and yeah, fantastic. And like I say, Staley Bridge is one of them them clubs where okay, we're short of three seasons, but it's up there. It's got to be up there with, with probably one of the best teams I've ever. I've ever managed because of the facilities are fantastic. Like I say, great backroom staff. You know, one of the best physios I've ever worked with, Dave Pover. Absolutely amazing. Man. Great board members. Uh, Rob Gorski got a lot of respect for Rob, always will. Uh, and, and as I say, uh, it, I never used to get time to, lads used to be on the way and I never got a chance to talk to lads because I were always talking to fans, but they were so friendly. You know what I mean? And they used yeah. to, one or two used to have a bit of fun with me. You'd say, oh, you know, you lads across the border, you're up north. You know, <laughs> take it, Mickey, how we talk and everything. So, but yeah, brilliant. Absolute brilliant. And that's the first thing you want as a manager. You, you, you want to be, you want to be loved. And yeah. I felt loved at, at Staley Bridge, you know, and I always remember when we did achieve the great escape and somebody sent me some photos of a lamppost from Staley Bridge with that great escape uh, <laughs> and they, they took his, his face off and put mine on. <laughs> and uh, I thought oh, that, that was absolutely amazing. And, and if, you know, if I, if I see him any time, you know, I'd, I'd always get a, a nice warm welcome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the um, that's one of the the best things about non-league. I'd probably say is when not just at Staley Bridge, but when you're at a place where you connect with fans, and that's sort of why people go to non-league because you're all sort of a big family. That's absolutely right, man. And to be honest with you, and I'm not bothered if they take it wrong way, but never had that at Harrogate because I mean, Harrogate and, and Staley Bridge are completely different. Or, or they were in them days. I mean, we used to get 350 hardcore. And uh, it, they weren't. They never used to chant or anything, and uh, you know, they used to talk quite posh. And there were no, there were not. When you went in bar, there were nobody. Oh, really? Come here and let's have a laugh and a blah blah blah. There were none of that. Yeah. 
and and Staley Bridge were like Ghoul. I mean, Ghoul were a fantastic club for fans as well. We had, we had some amazing times with there and uh, and uh, my youngest daughter, uh, Rachel, she used to come with me. And, uh, oh, she used to love it on us on away trips. Uh, and we used to have to say to them, don't you, do, uh, don't you tell your mum you've had a bit of a, something to drink because you're only 14. <laughs> Well, lads used to get on like, oh, look at what we give her a cannon. Oh, yeah. That's, that, fan, fans make it for me, Andrew. And that's why when Blackie said uh, to go to her, I mean, I know for a fact then they get four, five hundred on a regular basis. Yeah. And they're, they're very helpful because Belper were great for me when I were at Arrogate because we won title at Belper <laughs> in 2002. Yeah. Incredible how it was round, but yeah, you know, if you, if you said to me, who's the best fans you, you've, you've out of all your career? I think Staley might just tip the scales. I'm sure they'd love that. Um, yeah. And another one from your time um, was a run in the League Cup that the conference ran. Um, when we got to final. It, yeah, and it ended with, 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 with away at Woking. Uh, we, we lost 1-0 at home. We were at home. It was at Staley Bridge. Right. We got beat 1-0, but it was a great achievement. But, uh, yeah, for, for Staley Bridge to, to like you say, space of, what, what were it, 18 months, gone from where they had, and then they've got a cup final. It was were, it were fabulous. We'll we'll talk about a bit of your, play, your players and stuff like that at Staley Bridge. Um, you in a moment, but I, I got told to mention about Mark, Mark Atkins as well. Apparently, yeah. the best performance he ever had was away an away win at, at Morecambe Town. What was it uh, at Morecambe? Sorry, not Morecambe Town. What was it yeah, like Morecambe, to be with Mark Atkins? They were unbelievable. He just made that ball talk. It was just such a shame that his his crucial give way like it did because. He, he could have played on for another five, six years. He, he was colossal. But that particular one game away at Morecambe midweek, he was unbelievable. You looked at him and you thought, well, oh, he could still play in second division, this kid. Yeah. And you took him on as your assistant, is that right? Right, yeah. 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 So, talking more about your plays and sort of, uh, uh, and stuff like that at Celtic, who was the best player you think you've, you had at Celtic at the time in them three years? Oh, that's good. Well, what, people, the fans are going to like this, but I mean, you know, for me, what he, he gave and what he, the example he gave out to all his teammates, Kevin Parr must be one of the best. You know, and Kev Parr possibly, second season in particular, he, he would probably on bench more time than he did, but you know what, that kid never made a muff, he never made a moan, he never came to see me in my office. I used to put him on and he like a tiger. He, he let him let him loose and it he's it, just it just rubbed up on, on everybody else. So I, I'd have to say Kev Parr for his all round of love for the club and things like that. Ability wise, um Lee, Lee Ellington must have been one at best. Great. Yeah. Uh, Andy Parton, I know we didn't have him long from Scunthorpe. He made a big, big difference. And obviously, got to give Craig Dutton a mention, you know, keeper. Craig was fantastic when he played for us. Um, ben Smith, another great lad, a lo local lad, I think. Did he play for both Oldham? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I did. Oh, Scott Bonzel. You could have put him in, like I said to you earlier. Uh, I, I always said one of the best ever were Grant Black and he walked you just you just put his number two on him, and you used to say to anybody, "Well, he, he'll get eight out of ten at least," and that's how he walked. Yeah, you know, his bad games were eight out of ten. He used to get nines and tens, and again, my kind of player because he had that. You know, when people talk to you about um, individual um, determination and work rate, that's a fact. You can, you, you, as a manager, uh, you can play a big part in both of them. What you can't play a big part in, you can't play any part in, is personal desire. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. 
And I were fortunate as a as a as a footballer. I had that desire, and I never lost it. And I, I still haven't got it. I still haven't lost it till today. You know, when we go back at Belper, I I did one session on a Saturday morning before we all um, the lockdown affected us all. And I, I, my first thing, at least I, the good thing is, I knew about six of players who played for me at various clubs. And I said, well, the one thing about me is, I just I'm on about you as a, as players um i can help you in every single way you want but i can't help you in desire personal desire i can't help you but i said i'm old school i won't change i know the uh, coaching's changing uh, dramatically because i've seen some of these ua for b and ua for a things what they do now andrew and it's totally different but the lads at both at Chorley and, and Gainsborough, when I, I when I were Craig Elliott's assistant and Lee Sinnott's assistant, I were totally in charge of training, and I used to run them ragged, no messing. I used to say to them, "You'll moan, but all I want you to do is you just keep going, just going, keep till you go till you drop. If you drop, then we'll, we'll sort you out. But you're going to work hard because if you're fit and you're organised." And that's down to your manager, your assistant manager. They're halfway there. The ability side, you can't do about that. Once you cross that white line, there's nothing you can do about it. But that, them qualities, as I say, work rate, desire, massive words in my dressing room. As you know, that I used to have that thing and I had it, I had it in Staley Bridge um, dressing room. Winners never quit. Quits, quitters never win. And I used to, plug it every single game we went I used to just say before you go out just remember that up there and, and yeah. you know what in all them years because they went, they went, it went all over with me everywhere I went I put it up because um, I used to take it I used to take the board away with me when, I, when, I, when we parted yeah. <laughs> I used to put it up and, and I still believe in it today I really yeah. do you know do, what do you know it's still, Sorry, go on, it's still up in the stairs we started changing room is it, man? Yeah. That's that's incredible. I'm I'm chuffed to death about that. That is great. That I, I know it is at Bridge because I've, 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 I've I know Pete uh, Swayth, the, the, the chairman there. He's he's tried to get me a few times, and I've, sometimes when I work because I used to be a salesman, I used to be on the East Coast. Matt, me and Clive Freeman used to go and meet at Bridge, and, and it's still there in their dressing room as well. So it's great. It's amazing. I know it's, it's that is sort of a, a, probably a really good thing to hear that like a bit of your legacy is probably left behind in, in them changing yeah. rooms as well. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd hope before uh, my time's finished, uh, I'd hope to hopefully bring a team back to Staley Bridge, whether it be Belper, if if we can get up in. Uh, but I think we'll nil and void the league this year, uh, this yeah. this week, I think. Yeah, I think they're not avoided. Yeah, they've got to Andrew. We've only played nine games. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we did actually play Belper in pre-season this year. Um, so I mean, I think I spoke to Blackie and they organised it. So I'm sure we can sort of organise that again for the 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 next season when we eventually get round to that because we're uh, oh, we yeah. that would be great as well. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll probably take a crate of beer for Staley Bridge fans. I'm sure that uh, you'll get a few tickets being sold just for the fact that you'll be there as well. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. Like I say, absolutely fabulous, fabulous. No other words for it. Um, I know, I know, it's not sort of uh, the what the manager sees the most of, but who would you say the funniest player you had at Celtic was? At Celtic, oh, that's it. Well. But, um, well, Blackie were quite good. That's a good question. I say what? I mean, Ben Smith were really, he were really funny to me. I, I mean, he's that from Oldham and that. He, he, were, he, were a, he were a proper lad, but Ben. Um, Nick Buxton, he, 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 were a, he were a good lad in dressing room, goalkeeper, and um, when Ben became goalkeeper coach. Yeah, Nick Buxton, he were good. Mark were very um, studious. He wanted everything done properly. Uh, it were great. I mean, I, sometimes I used to hate it when we were travelling over for training to Staley Bridge. 
and his phone or my phone went and it, a lot of the time Paul Sykes then were a lorry driver <laughs> and it, if it was Sykes he, it didn't matter where it he could crackers but when I put phone down he'd say I'm sorry really I'm stuck in Carlisle or Scotland and I'd say well there's no you can do your job's your job oh and then when phone went down he used to explode in Mark and go <laughs> crazy honestly and he'd go oh, that's, I'm going to spoil it for everybody I says no he didn't he can't do it about it yeah uh, yeah, yeah. I can't, and, uh, I can't think of any outstanding. You know, somebody what stands out. Oh, he was absolutely hilarious. So Scott Bonzel, he liked to laugh. Uh, we used to call Paul Sykes uh, uh, Dupo because of his hair. Uh, <laughs> but again, Paul Sykes were a, he, in his own way. He were, he were a funny lad as well. So yeah, I mean, Andrew as a, a manager, people always used to say to me. Uh, when they when they'd left or I'd moved her on and blah 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 and when we get talking I used to love it because it made me feel really good because he used to say oh your your dressing rooms were the best they were always the best and um, uh, that 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 made me feel even better to be honest because like I say as a manager as you even know even in Premier now if them players turn against you, you have no chance. Yeah. Uh, and while you mentioned that, um, I, th- I think I'll mention this now. Uh, I, I mentioned that you were coming on and doing this podcast. The former right. Celtic player messaged me, Mark Lees, and oh, said that he Matt had you at Lees. Buxton and he just wanted yeah. me to say hello to you because he, uh, he said he was you were such a good, good person for his career. Yeah. Yeah. Good lad, Mark Lees. Lovely, lovely lad. Yeah, did great for me at Staley and Buxton. Yeah, he's still playing now. He was at Matlock last season. Yeah, that's right. He was. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, the the last one about Staley Bridge is if you had to pick a five a side team to to go and win a five a side league out your players from the time there, who would you pick? Well, Dukes will be in goal. Two defenders would be uh, well, obviously Grant Black. Uh, I'd probably say Psycho, because Psycho, he one of them, he could great centre half, but also a, a great centre forward. So two back, two defending players, Blackie and Psycho. Definitely Bono in Bonzo in midfield. Uh, is that three? Yeah, one, two, three, four. And then Lee Ellington and Andy Parton up front. Yeah, a good team. Um, so we'll sort of move on to where we are today. Uh, you mentioned about um, some of your previous clubs there. You, you, you've you've sort of gone from a manager to an assistant manager. Is there any reason why you ended up doing that later on in your career? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, that's a fact that, obviously, age. I'm 69 now. So, yeah. um, I, and I wanted to take that number two role because I'd gone well beyond 2,000 games as a manager. I mean... Yeah, I got I got presented at Birmingham with Peter Taylor, the ex England manager. He presented the, the trophy for reaching two thousand games. That was back in two thousand and ten, I think. Right, or twelve, one of them two anyway. Um, and and then obviously the, my last uh, post were at Osset Town because it's gone. They've, they've joined forces with. Yeah. Osset Albion now and they're Osset United, aren't they? Yeah. And and to be honest with you, I was getting fed up of uh, the phone never stopped. Uh, you're always on the go, blah blah blah. And I just said, I just said to Pam, when I finish at Osset, that'll be last time I'll be a manager. Um, and I, I want to go as an assistant manager then from there on. And uh, fortunately, Rudy Funk at Scarborough, he. Um, he kindly asked me to go to Scarborough as his number two. Um, unfortunately, it didn't last that long. It was only about 12, 14 weeks. But um, as I said to you, I'm old school. Um, some of the things he did were um, just so unprofessional. And I um, always remember we were at Osset, Osset uh, Albion away in a league match, a league cup match, I beg your pardon. And we won 3-1. And um, 
things that he did things there, you know, he were to do with everything, you know, he just, he just had a different way of, of, of um, doing things before the game, after the game. And I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't think they were right. So I just pulled him in the chairman and said, look, you know, I'll give it 12 weeks, uh, but I'm just sorry. I'm going to say it to your face. Cause I don't, I don't want, I don't want to fall out with you, but I don't like what you're doing and, and how you run things and, I'm sorry, I, I, and I'm going to leave, and I'm going to leave tonight. I won't be going to tell for the FA Cup on Saturday. And they always blame me for that because they got beat 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, 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 I couldn't. So anyway, and then, like I say, I've had a nice, um, I've had a nice time working with uh, Craig Elliott. Uh, again, Craig Elliott, we're a young lad. Yeah. I signed Harrogate when he was 17, and he made some alive. Oh, 10, 11 appearances, and then he got a nasty knee injury, and he never really recovered from that, bless him. But again, look at him now, he's gone, he's at Boston, and he's doing really well. Um, again, he's not a shouter like me. There aren't many shouters, I don't think, really, to be honest, Andrew. Um, and then, and I loved working with Lee in it. I have to say, he was a pleasure to work for, he was so professional. He, everything, uh, when you turned up on a Saturday or a midweek game, I used to think, flipping heck, he, he's amazing, this bloke. No wonder he, he got, he worked for Port, where you were, Port Vale manager and Altrincham manager and uh, Farsi Celtic. But like he said, and it, and it was great when I said to him, oh, you, you know, I really love working with yourself and, uh, you, you know, you're totally different to me. And he just said, yeah, only difference is my my cabinet's not full of eleven league titles. <laughs> <laughs> so you know we're all different, I suppose. But and, I, and I've loved it. I really have. I, I've loved yeah. it. Assistant manager, um, and I'd lo- I'll, I'm really looking forward to helping Grant push Bell because they they've got they have now got plans in place where they want to be playing Conference North. So yeah. You know, I mean, uh, before we before we before we get to the end, I mean, um, how did it come about that your former player Grant got you in at Belper? Um, very easy. Uh, he, he had a lad called Steve Ridley, who they both played for me at Ben at uh, Buxton. Steve's a great lad. He was a great player, left left back or left sided player, and he went as player coach. To Bel to Belper with Blackie last year or year before, um, and he got this particular season in the nine games that they had, he'd only featured in I think about three, and he weren't liking it. He want he thought he deserved to be in the team, so he didn't want to fall out with Blackie. Uh, he'd had an offer from Winston Rangers in the northeast counties, and. Um, he just said to Blackie, yeah, I want to go back playing permanent. I'm 36. I ain't going to play many games for you, really. So he went and as soon as he went, Blackie contacted me and said, can we meet up tomorrow? And we did and the rest is history. Well, I hope you uh, have some successful times at Balfour as well. Um, and hopefully we'll see you back at Balfour with um, them that, soon enough. Yeah, well, I love it, Andrew, like I say. Um, fabulous people, fabulous times, and yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, and I just want to thank you for coming on and uh, for to share some stories with me. I've been, I've, I've really enjoyed it, and so have I, Andrew. It's been fabulous, mate. Uh, so I wish you all the best, and I'll uh, see you soon, Reedy. Yeah, stay safe, mate. Yeah.